Hi, welcome to VCC TV. Today we have with us Mr. Manish Agarwal, CEO of Nazara Technologies to discuss more about the gaming industry in India and its future. Thanks for coming on the show, sir. Pleasure, Ishan. So starting off, how is the Indian gaming industry shaping up? I think it's the just the on beginning of the golden period for the Indian mobile gaming industry. And I will talk about mobile because I believe that's the only medium which one should focus in this country now. Yeah, and uh, that is going to explode like crazy. And I think what we have seen in last four years in e-commerce, we are going to see in next three years, four years will be for gaming in this country. So you will have roughly around 500 billion smartphones getting shipped in three, four years. Mm -hmm. You would have at least 300 million gamers getting added. These are the, f mind you, first time mobile internet users, yeah. first time mobile gamers, mm -hmm. and these are the users who will, who carry their mobile as their personal device always with them, yeah. and they don't have any other entertainment option, mm -hmm. uh, and gaming is something which they really kind of lean on for a time pass and stress buster. Mm -hmm. So they are really going to be a huge gaming market this country is going to be, mm -hmm. and uh, Indians have proven, I'm saying we have seen in, in variety of things and categories, when they get it, they just get it. Um, and like fish takes to water, I believe that I've already seen the gaming in last one and a half years exploding and, and it, it, the acceleration is always going to happen. Let's talk about the indie gaming scene. How is it evolving in India? I think uh, any, any place, if you see worldwide, the indie gaming is directly proportional to the domestic market. Mm -hmm. If the domestic market takes off, it really fosters a lot of innovation in the ecosystem, encourages a lot of Indian developers or indie developers to look at consumers which they understand, which they relate to. And I think that's what we are seeing in India. Uh, I very, very am a big proponent of the indie ecosystem here in India and I believe there's a lot of good talent now which is kind of really dappling in how to make local relevant cultural games for India, and which is a great sign uh, because when you, it's a virtuous cycle that if you get start getting more relevant local content, more consumers will play it, and if more consumers play it, more content will come. Yeah. So I think that cycle of, of, of virtuous cycle of ecosystem has kind of started. The wheels have started spinning. Mm -hmm. uh, the momentum is going to just increase on that. What are the ways of monetization uh, as far as the in gaming aspect is concerned? I think fundamentally, a couple of things which you need to understand before you even get to monetization. Now, bulk of Indian consumers will come in for a time pass or a stress buster motive. Mm -hmm. And it's important that to understand motive because motive is directly proportional to engagement and attention. Mm -hmm. And engagement attention is directly proportional to monetization. Mm -hmm. So, given that they are coming for a time pass and they are very, very casual, uh, you've got to really look at how do we monetize them from an ads and how do you monetize them from incentive ads. I think that's one of the primary things you need to do. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to really look at a segmentation within that gamers, you will have one segment which is kind of moved slightly more evolved and mature and want to move from being a very, very casual, snacky, snappy content to more evolved, where the motive could be competitive, mm -hmm. uh, where the motive could be co-creation. Okay. Now, in those cases, you will have in-app purchases and a premium model. Now, for those models, you've got to really create a frictionless last mile microtransaction. So the last mile microtransactions are very important mm -hmm. when you're looking at in-app purchases to happen. Mm -hmm. And which is where either the mobile carrier billing uh, or the alternate payment wallets will really come into picture, uh, like what happened in uh, China. Mm -hmm. And these two factors will be very, very important. This is as far as you're looking at discrete games. Now, if you want to kind of look at gaming as a service, uh, like what we do at Nazara, we have run a games club and gaming subscription service. Mm -hmm. Now, that's another model for the consumers which can really want to have a convenience of a curated game store mm -hmm. and they want to eat as much as you can kind of model yeah. like your Netflix. I think that's a third piece which we are seeing a huge traction in this country yeah. uh, and uh, for the users they really do not want to take the pain of searching, discovering and all that stuff. You just kind of serve them good quality games on the platter and they kind of very happy to download them and play them. Mm -hmm. I think that's the third model which really exists in this country and will continue to exist. Now, talking about models as we are on the topic, uh, Nazara has followed this model of, of providing more of a Netflix kind of approach. While uh, there are two other models, one is the ad uh, model and the other one is more of a, a kind of model that Lance followed in the past. Right? Uh, 
is Nazara moving towards that ad model or no for now you are happy with what you've got? I think uh, fundamentally what at Nazara we like to do is we like to kind of dissect the market into three clusters. Mm -hmm. We want to dissect based on the consumer behavior. A consumer which is more involved and engaged with the game, mm -hmm. we like to have some kind of a freemium model. Mm -hmm. And we kind of would like to really have uh, some kind of a common currency which kind of links one game to another game to another game. Mm -hmm. And there it's imperative that we have the zero friction in the last mile micro billing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now whether that game, if uh, let's say tomorrow Google Play has last mile micro billing, we'll be happy to publish our games on Google Play or we continue to do a direct to consumer through non Google Play, which is what yeah. it is. Now the second piece is that consumers which are very snacky snappy mm -hmm. and which are really looking for a very small curated content because we still have a large feature phone install base and feature phones are still being sold, that we will continue to have a subscription. The third cluster is, is the uh, small and Android phones. Now those, those consumers will have to, as I said, there will be two types of consumers, one who are just migrating from feature phone to smart and they are first time gamers. Mm -hmm. There we will grab, we will kind of create some kind of freemium subscription service okay. where you can do some sampling and then you can kind of subscribe it. Mm -hmm. Like again a Netflix model where you get it at one dollar or one cent whatever it is in first month and then you kind of do that. So our paywall which is currently right up front mm -hmm. may kind of go a little back okay. uh, for the audiences which may be on some freemium. So as I said, three three segments. One is deep involved, engaged consumers. For them, we will have uh, what you said, like a Reliance kind of model with last mile trans micro transactions happening. Mm -hmm. For feature phones, we'll continue to have a current subscription model, yeah. and for Android, we will have a freemium subscription service. Now, talking about the other aspect of gaming, uh, the development of uh, gaming in India, right? Is there an incubation program that Nazar is actually targeting? for the development of um, games. See, Nazara is a game fund and which in your conference I think one and a half, two years back is when yeah. Nazara really had announced. And uh, we will leverage that game fund to really invest into companies uh, which have shown a proven POCs and KPIs. Mm -hmm. One thing which uh, we, we, which I am and I, Anitish and I are very aligned is that we want to look at games which have been at least through a beta testing or a soft launch mm -hmm. and have retention KPIs. We would like to invest in those kind of companies and teams mm -hmm. uh, rather than just on the PPT and a concept. Okay. Uh, we believe that a lot of Indian game developers have that capability to create games which have high retention. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are really kind of doing that. As, as far as creating an incubator or an accelerator for gaming is concerned, I think right now we are super focused on how to get ourselves at next 300 million consumers which are going to be added into gaming over the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, once we kind of figure out what is the multiple ways to really look at them, yeah. then we will think of incubator accelerator. But at this juncture, that's not our top priority. You have just enlisted credit suite for raising funds. How is that going out? I think the process is really in full swing. The uh, response has been very, very exciting. Really, really exciting for us. Mm -hmm. And um, I have been just, as I said, three weeks into that process. Mm -hmm. But um, the engagement of the potential uh, partners or investors mm -hmm. is really, really very, very high. Okay. And uh, so we will get to hear things as, as they happen. Mm -hmm. But all I can say at this juncture is we are very pleased with the progress which has been made so far. Okay. We've talked about um, how there are three models you want to told us. And uh, let's talk about in-app purchases. Is the Indian market ready for in-app purchase model? See, I believe uh, it's a function of two things. And I have always managed that. One is the zero friction in last mile micro mm -hmm. And second is the pricing of the in-app purchase have to be as per the purchasing power parity. Mm -hmm. If you can't do these two things, you can just really forget about in-app purchases happening in this country. And which is what people like us will like to experiment, as I said, with uh, motive of being competitive or co-creation, putting those games, solving the last mile micro transactions as well as the in-app purchasing, purchasing parity. And we believe that uh, if we are able to offer at the right price, mm -hmm. now what is that right price, whether it's a 5 rupees, or whether it's 1 rupee, whether it's 9 rupees, I don't know. That's all experimentation, which one needs to kind of do that. But if we are able to create compelling content with these wells and whistles, mm -hmm. I think we will see a lot of consumers doing it. I am a very, very big proponent of a sachet pricing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I have always maintained uh, was really a big thing which Unilever did. Mm -hmm. 
uh, category penetration happens, consumption happens, adoption happens and that's what will happen in gaming. So there is no doubt in my mind that is not going to happen, just that we need to get the basics right. We can't really create so many frictions in the process and then also expect users to really do all it takes to pay us. I think that's that's not going to happen. There are talks about Robio coming into India, right? How does that pose a challenge for Nazara or for other uh, See, Honestly, I have no idea what they're going to do. Yeah. Uh, now, if they wish to kind of really partner with people like us, we'll be very happy to partner. Yeah, we are running a gaming service. Uh, they have a big brand. Now they want to kind of put their content, localize it, massify it, pricing point of view, cultural point of view. Would be happy to partner. So I really can't comment on what, uh, how it's is it going to be a good thing, bad thing, ugly thing, because I am not privy to a strategy. Uh, if I were, I would have answered this question. What are the expected games that we can see coming from Nazara in the near future? What's next for Nazar? See, what you will see is, as I said, we are very focused on the first time mobile gamers and we will look at uh, very simple, very casual games which may not be very sexy and cool to a pro gamer or to a casual, to a mid-core gamer or a hardcore gamer. We believe that that's our audience. Uh, we will make games which are 5 MB, 6 MB games. Uh, we will kind of make it very simple game mechanics, which is non-intuitive, we don't need uh, a tutorial to learn the game. Mm -hmm. And we will make games which are culturally relevant to India. Okay. And we will, we have, I'm a very strong proponent of vernacular. I believe that there are two things, if, if it's a very ultra casual game, you don't need a language, mm -hmm. then it's fine. However, if it's a character based game or it's a role playing kind of a game, mm -hmm whichever genre then you need some kind of a language and that language if you kind of put it in vernacular you may have a one more entry barrier kind of uh, lowering yeah. in terms of adoption of gaming mm -hmm. so just to kind of freely summarize we will look at very casual ultra casual games less than five six mb happening uh, which uh, first time mobile gamer can play it easily okay. that's about it sir thank, thank you, you. Thanks, a lot for your time. thanks isha thank you